Section 16 of the Aeneid of Virgil. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book 8, Part 2. Thus walking on he spoke, and showed the gate, since called Carmental by the Roman state, where stood an altar sacred to the name of old Carmenta, the prophetic dame, who to her son foretold the Aeneian race, sublime in fame and Rome's imperial place then shows the forest which in after times fierce romulus for perpetrated crimes a sacred refuge made with this the shrine where pan below the rock had rites divine then tells of argus death his murdered guest whose grave and tomb his innocence attest thence to the steep tarpeian rock he leads now roofed with gold then thatched with homely reeds a reverent fear such superstition reigns among the rude even then possessed the swains some god they knew what god they could not tell did there amidst the sacred horror dwell the arcadians thought him jove and said they saw the mighty thunderer with majestic awe who took his shield and dealt his bolts around and scattered tempests on the teeming ground then saw two heaps of ruins once they stood two stately towns on either side the flood saturnia's and janicula's remains and either place the founder's name retains discoursing thus together they resort where poor evander kept his country court they viewed the ground of rome's litigious hall once oxen load where now the lawyers ball then stooping through the narrow gate they pressed when thus the king bespoke his trojan guest mean as it is this palace and this door received alcides then a conqueror dare to be poor accept our homely food which feasted him and emulate a god then underneath a lowly roof he led the weary prince and laid him on a bed the stuffing leaves with hides of bears o'erspread now night had shed her silver dews around and with her sable wings embraced the ground when love's fair goddess anxious for her son new tumults rising and new wars begun couched with her husband in his golden bed with these alluring words invokes his aid and that her pleasing speech his mind may move inspires each accent with the charms of love while cruel fate conspired with grecian powers to level with the ground the trojan towers i asked not aid the unhappy to restore nor did the succour of thy skill implore nor urged the labours of my lord in vain a sinking empire longer to sustain though much i owed to priam's house and more the dangers of aeneas did deplore but now by jove's command and fate's decree his race is doomed to reign in Italy. With humble suit I beg thy needful art, O still propitious power that rules my heart. A mother kneels a suppliant for her son. By Thetis and Aurora thou wert one, To forge impenetrable shields, And grace with fated arms a less illustrious race. Behold what haughty nations are combined Against the relics of the Phrygian kind, with fire and sword my people to destroy, And conquer Venus twice in conquering Troy. She said, and straight her arms of snowy hue About her unresolving husband threw. Her soft embraces soon infuse desire, His bones and marrow sudden warmth inspire, And all the godhead feels the wanted fire. Not half so swift the rattling thunder flies, Or forky lightnings flash along the skies. The goddess, proud of her successful wiles, And conscious of her form in secret smiles. Then thus the power, obnoxious to her charms, Panting and half dissolving in her arms, Why seek you reasons for a cause so just, Or your own beauties, or my love distrust? Long since had you required my helpful hand, The artificer and art you might command to labor arms for troy nor jove nor fate confined their empire to so short a date and if you now desire new wars to wage my skill i promise and my pains engage 
Whatever melting metals can conspire, or breathing bellows, or the forming fire, is freely yours. Your anxious fears remove, and think no task is difficult to love. Trembling he spoke, and eager of her charms, he snatched the willing goddess to his arms, till in her lap infused he lay possessed of full desire, and sunk to pleasing rest. Now when the night her middle race had rode, and his first slumber had refreshed the god, the time when early housewives leave the bed, when living embers on the hearth they spread, supply the lamp, and call the maids to rise, with yawning mouths and with half-opened eyes, they ply the distaff by the winking light, and to their daily labor add the night. Thus frugally they earn their children's bread, and uncorrupted keep the nuptial bed. Not less concerned, nor at a later hour, rose from his downy couch the forging power. Sacred to Vulcan's name an isle there lay, betwixt Sicilia's coasts and Lipare. Raised high on smoking rocks, and deep below, in hollow caves, the fires of Etna glow. The Cyclops hear their heavy hammers deal, loud strokes and hissings of tormented steel are heard around, the boiling waters roar, and smoky flames through fuming tunnels soar. Hither the father of the fire, by night, through the brown air precipitates his flight, on their eternal anvils here he found the brethren beating and the blows go round a load of pointless thunder now there lies before their hands to ripen for the skies these darts for angry jove they daily cast consumed on mortals with prodigious waste three rays of riven rain of fire three more of winged southern winds and cloudy store as many parts the dreadful mixture frame and fears are added, and avenging flame. Inferior ministers for Mars repair his broken axle-trees and blunted war, and send him forth again with furbished arms, to wake the lazy war with trumpets loud alarms, to rest refresh the scaly snakes that fold the shield of Pallas, and renew their gold. Full on the crest the gorgon's head they place, with eyes that roll in death, and with distorted face. My sons, said Vulcan, set your tasks aside. Your strength and master skill must now be tried. Arms for a hero forge, arms that require your force, your speed, and all your forming fire. He said they set their former work aside, and their new toils with eager haste divide. A flood of molten silver, brass, and gold, and deadly steel in the large furnace rolled. Of this their artful hands a shield prepare, alone sufficient to sustain the war. Seven orbs within a spacious round they close, one stirs the fire, and one the bellows blows. The hissing steel is in the smithy drowned, the grot with beaten anvils groans around. By turns their arms advance in equal time, by turns their hands descend and hammers chime. They turn the glowing mass with crooked tongs. The fiery work proceeds with rustic songs. While at the Lemnian god's command they urge their labors thus and ply the Aeolian forge, the cheerful morn salutes Evander's eyes, and songs of chirping birds invite to rise. He leaves his lowly bed, his buskins meet above his ankles, sandals sheathe his feet. He sets his trusty sword upon his side, and o'er his shoulder throws a panther's hide. Two menial dogs before their master pressed, thus clad and guarded thus, he seeks his kingly guest. Mindful of promised aid, he mends his pace, but meets Aeneas in the middle space. Young Pallas did his father's steps attend and true Achates waited on his friend. They join their hands, a secret seat they choose, the Arcadian first their former talk renews. Undaunted prince, I never can believe the Trojan empire lost while you survive. Command the assistance of a faithful friend, but feeble are the succors I can send. Our narrow kingdom here the Tiber bounds, that other side the Latian state surrounds, insults our walls, and wastes our fruitful grounds. 
but mighty nations i prepare to join their arms with yours and aid your just design you come as by your better genius sent and fortune seems to favor your intent not far from hence there stands a hilly town of ancient building and of high renown torn from the tuscans by the lydian race who gave the name of Cera to the place once aguilina called it flourished long in pride of wealth and warlike people strong till cursed mezentius in a fatal hour assumed the crown with arbitrary power what words can paint those execrable times the subjects sufferings and the tyrants crimes that blood those murders or ye gods replace on his own head and on his impious race the living and the dead at his command were coupled face to face and hand to hand till choked with stench in loathed embraces tied the lingering wretches pined away and died thus plunged in ills and meditating more the people's patience tired no longer bore the raging monster but with arms beset his house and vengeance and destruction threat they fire his palace while the flame ascends they force his guards and execute his friends he cleaves the crowd and favored by the night to turnus friendly court directs his flight by just revenge the tuscans set on fire with arms their king to punishment require their numerous troops now mustered on the strand my council shall submit to your command their navy swarms upon the coasts they cry to hoist their anchors but the gods deny an ancient augur skilled in future fate with these foreboding words restrains their hate ye brave in arms ye lydian blood the flower of tuscan youth and choice of all their power whom just revenge against mezentius arms to seek your tyrant's death by lawful arms know this no native of our land may lead this powerful people seek a foreign head awed with these words in camps they still abide and wait with longing looks their promised guide tarchon the tuscan chief to me has sent their crown and every regal ornament the people join their own with his desire and all my conduct as their king require but the chill blood that creeps within my veins and age and listless limbs unfit for pains and a soul conscious of its own decay have forced me to refuse imperial sway my palace were more fit to mount the throne and should but he's a sabine mother's son and half a native but in you combine a manly vigor and a foreign line where fate and smiling fortune show the way pursue the ready path to sovereign sway the staff of my declining days my son shall make your good or ill success his own in fighting fields from you shall learn to dare and serve the hard apprenticeship of war your matchless courage and your conduct view and early shall begin to admire and copy you besides two hundred horse he shall command though few a warlike and well-chosen band these in my name are listed at my son as many more has added in his own scarce had he said achates and his guest with downcast eyes their silent grief expressed who short of succors and in deep despair shook at the dismal prospect of the war but his bright mother from a breaking cloud to cheer her issue thundered thrice aloud thrice forky lightning flashed along the sky and tyrene trumpets thrice were heard on high then gazing up repeated peals they hear and in a heaven serene refulgent arms appear reddening the skies and glittering all around the tempered metals clash and yield a silver sound the rest stood trembling struck with awe divine aeneas only conscious to the sign presaged the event and joyful viewed above the accomplished promise of the queen of love then to the arcadian king this prodigy dismiss your fear belongs alone to me heaven calls me to the war the expected sign is given of promised aid and arms divine my goddess mother whose indulgent care foresaw the dangers of the growing war this omen gave when bright vulcanian arms fated from force of steel by stygian charms suspended shone on high she then foreshadowed approaching fights and fields to float in blood 
Turnus shall dearly pay for faith forsworn, and corpse and swords and shields on Tiber born shall choke his flood. Now sound the loud alarms, and Latian troops prepare your perjured arms. He said, and rising from his homely throne, the solemn rites of Hercules begun, and on his altars waked the sleeping fires, then cheerful to his household gods retires, their offers chosen sheep. The Arcadian king and Trojan youth the same oblations bring. Next of his men and ships he makes review, draws out the best and ablest of the crew. Down with the falling stream the refuse run, to raise with joyful news his drooping son. Steeds are prepared to mount the Trojan band, who wait their leader to the Tyrene land. A sprightly courser, fairer than the rest, the king himself presents his royal guest. A lion's hide, his back and limbs enfold, precious with studded work and paws of gold. Fame through the little city spreads aloud the intended march amid the fearful crowd. The matrons beat their breasts, dissolve in tears, and double their devotion in their fears. The war at hand appears with more affright, and rises every moment to the sight. Then old Evander, with a close embrace, strained his departing friend, and tears o'erflow his face. Would heaven, said he, my strength and youth recall, such as I was beneath Prynestes' wall. Then when I made the foremost foes retire, and set whole heaps of conquered shields on fire. When Herilus in single fight I slew, whom with three lives Veronia did endue, and thrice I sent him to the Stygian shore, till the last ebbing soul returned no more. Such if I stood renewed, not these alarms, nor death should rend me from my palace arms. Nor proud Mazentius thus unpunished boast his rapes and murders on the Tuscan coast. Ye gods and mighty Jove, in pity bring relief, and hear a father and a king. If fate and you reserve these eyes to see my son return with peace and victory, if the loved boy shall bless his father's sight, if we shall meet again with more delight, then draw my life in length, let me sustain in hopes of his embrace the worst of pain. But if your hard decrees, which, oh, I tread, have doomed to death his undeserving head, this, oh, this very moment let me die, while hopes and fears in equal balance lie. While, yet possessed of all his youthful charms, I strain him close within these aged arms, before that fatal news my soul shall wound, he said, and swooning sunk upon the ground. His servants bore him off, and softly laid his languished limbs upon his homely bed. The horsemen march, the gates are opened wide, Aeneas at their head, Achates by his side. Next these the Trojan leaders rode along, last follows in the rear the Arcadian throng. Young Pallas shone conspicuous o'er the rest, gilded his arms, embroidered was his vest. So from the seas exerts his radiant head, the star by whom the lights of heaven are led, shakes from his rosy locks the pearly dews, dispels the darkness and the day renews. The trembling wives the walls and turrets crowd, And follow with their eyes the dusty cloud, Which winds disperse by fits, and show from far The blaze of arms and shields and shining war, The troops drawn up in beautiful array, O'er healthy plains pursue the ready way. Repeated peals of shouts are heard around, The neighing coursers answer to the sound, And shake with horny hoofs the solid ground. A greenwood shade, for long religion known, Stands by the streams that wash the Tuscan town, Encompassed round with gloomy hills above, Which add a holy horror to the grove, The first inhabitants of Grecian blood, That sacred forest to Silvanus vowed, The guardian of their flocks and fields, And pay their due devotions on his annual day. Not far from hence, along the river's side, In tents secure, the Tuscan troops abide, by Tarchon led. Now from a rising ground Aeneas cast his wandering eyes around, and all the Tyrene army had in sight, stretched on the spacious plain from left to right. 
Thither his warlike train the Trojan led, Refreshed his men, and wearied horses fed. Meantime the mother goddess, crowned with charms, Breaks through the clouds and brings the fated arms. Within a winding vale she finds her son. On the cool river's banks, retired alone, She shows her heavenly form without disguise, And gives herself to his desiring eyes. Behold, she said, performed in every part, My promise made and Vulcan's labored art. Now seek, secure, the Latian enemy, And haughty Turnus to the field defy. She said, and having first her son embraced, The radiant arms beneath an oak she placed. Proud of the gift, he rolled his greedy sight Around the work, and gazed with vast delight. He lifts, he turns, he poises, and admires The crested helm that vomits radiant fires. His hands the fatal sword and corslet hold, One keen with tempered steel, one stiff with gold. Both ample, flaming both, and beamy bright, So shines a cloud when edged with adverse light. He shakes the pointed spear, and longs to try The plated quiches on his manly thigh. But most admires the shield's mysterious mould, And Roman triumphs rising on the gold. For these embossed the heavenly smith had wrought, Not in the rolls of future fate untaught, The wars in order, and the race divine Of warriors issuing from the Julian line. The cave of Mars was dressed with mossy greens, there by the wolf were laid the martial twins, Intrepid on her swelling dugs they hung. The foster dam lolled out her fawning tongue. They sucked secure, while bending back her head, She licked their tender limbs, and formed them as they fed. Not far from thence new Rome appears, With games projected for the rape of Sabine dames. The pit resounds with shrieks, a war succeeds, For breach of public faith, and unexampled deeds. Here for revenge the Sabine troops contend, The Romans there with arms the prey defend. Wearied with tedious war, at length they cease, And both the kings and kingdoms plight the peace. The friendly chiefs before Jove's altar stand, Both armed, with each a charger in his hand. A fatted sow for sacrifice is led, With imprecations on the perjured head. Near this the traitor Metius, stretched between four fiery steeds, is dragged along the green. By Tullus' doom, the brambles drink his blood, and his torn limbs are left the vulture's food. There Porsena to Rome proud Tarquin brings, and would by force restore the banished kings. One tyrant for his fellow tyrant fights. The Roman youth assert their native rights. Before the town the Tuscan army lies, To win by famine or by fraud surprise. Their king, half-threatening, half-disdaining, stood, While Cocles broke the bridge and stemmed the flood. The captive maids there tempt the raging tide, Scaped from their chains with Clelia for their guide. High on a rock heroic Manlius stood, To guard the temple and the temple's god. Then Rome was poor, and there you might behold the palace thatched with straw, now roofed with gold. The silver goose before the shining gate there flew, and by her cackle saved the state. She told the Gauls approach, the approaching Gauls obscure in night ascend and seize the walls. The gold dissembled well their yellow hair, and golden chains on their white necks they wear. Gold are their vests, long alpine spears they wield, and their left arm sustains a length of shield. Hard by the leaping Salian priests advance, and naked through the streets the mad Luperci dance, in caps of wool, the targets dropped from heaven. Here modest matrons, in soft litters driven, to pay their vows in solemn pomp appear, and odorous gums in their chaste hands they bear. Far hence removed the Stygian seats are seen, Pains of the damned and punished Catiline, Hung on a rock the traitor, And around the furies hissing from the nether ground. Apart from these the happy souls he draws, And Cato's holy ghost dispensing laws. Betwixt the quarters flows a golden sea, But foaming surges there in silver play. 
the dancing dolphins with their tails divide the glittering waves and cut the precious tide amid the main two mighty fleets engage their brazen beaks opposed with equal rage actium surveys the well-disputed prize lucate's watery plain with foamy billows fries young caesar on the stern in armor bright here leads the romans and their gods to fight his beamy temples shoot their flames afar and o'er his head is hung the julian star agrippa seconds him with prosperous gales and with propitious gods his foes assails a naval crown that binds his manly brows the happy fortune of the fight foreshows ranged on the line opposed antonius brings barbarian aids and troops of eastern kings the arabians near and bactrians from afar of tongues discordant and a mingled war and rich in gaudy robes amidst the strife his ill fate follows him the egyptian wife moving they fight with oars and forky prows the froth is gathered and the water glows it seems as if the Kiklades again were rooted up and jostled in the main, or floating mountains, floating mountains meet. Such is the fierce encounter of the fleet. Fireballs are thrown and pointed javelins fly. The fields of Neptune take a purple dye. The queen herself amidst the loud alarms with symbols tossed her fainting soldiers warms, fool as she was who had not yet divined her cruel fate nor saw the snakes behind her country gods the monsters of the sky great neptune pallas and love's queen defy the dog anubis barks but barks in vain nor longer dares oppose the ethereal train mars in the middle of the shining shield is graved and strides along the liquid field the dear eyes souse from heaven with swift descent and discord dyed in blood with garments rent divides the priests her steps bellona treads and shakes her iron rod above their heads this scene apollo from his actian height pours down his arrows at whose winged flight the trembling indians and egyptians yield and soft surveyans quit the watery field the fatal mistress hoists her silken sails and shrinking from the fight invokes the gales aghast she looks and heaves her breast for breath panting and pale with fear of future death the god had figured her as driven along by winds and waves and scudding through the throng just opposite sad nihilus opens wide his arms and ample bosom to the tide and spreads his mantle o'er the winding coast in which he wraps his queen and hides the flying host the victor to the gods his thanks expressed and rome triumphant with his presence blessed three hundred temples in the town he placed with spoils and altars every temple graced three shining nights and three succeeding days the fields resound with shouts the streets with praise the domes with songs the theatres with plays all altars flame before each altar lies drenched in his gore the destined sacrifice great caesar sits sublime upon his throne before apollo's porch of parian stone accepts the presence vowed for victory and hangs the monumental crowns on high vast crowds of vanquished nations march along various in arms in habit and in tongue here mulciber assigns the proper place for carians and the ungirt numidian race then ranks the thracians in the second row with scythians expert in the dart and bow and here the tamed euphrates humbly glides and there the rhine submits her swelling tides and proud araxes whom no bridge could bind the danes unconquered offspring march behind and morini the last of humankind these figures on the shield divinely wrought by vulcan labored and by venus brought with joy and wonder fill the hero's thought unknown the names he yet admires the grace and bears aloft the fame and fortune of his race end of section sixteen